Hello everyone, good day. Good morning, good morning. Hello, teacher. Getting a little chilly these days. Starting to feel the winter coming. Hope you guys are doing fine. I hope you guys are keeping up with your coursework, homework, and hoping you're getting the support you need if you need it. Um, I want to let everyone know I listen to all the podcasts and I really like what I'm listening to. Um, I'm surprised not more of you are doing the podcasts. Um, I can't stress the importance of getting into a routine as far as the best way and the quickest way to improve your English is find a routine that gets you to listen and speak, in our case, right, as much as possible. Listening to podcasts on subjects that are of interest to you and then you speaking about those on a regular basis, I think has uh, a lot to do with how much you're going to improve your listening and speaking skills this semester. And I'm not even grading the performance except for your ability to try to create the language that you're not reading from a text, right? doesn't matter if you're making mistakes. doesn't matter if you have a lot of pauses. I hope that by doing these podcasts that you're feeling more comfortable speaking and not just reading from a text, but speaking off the top of your head, as they, as they say. So uh, continue doing the, the podcast. Please keep up with those. Try to get in a routine where you're listening, if not every day, right? Every other day, but you're listening to something as often as possible in English so that you're getting new information, but you're um, practicing your listening skills, okay? Now, today I want to finish our activity that we started yesterday. Um, I want to begin by looking at the Excel spreadsheet. I'm sharing my screen now, so hopefully you can see it. And one of the first things we did yesterday was to create, after we partnered up, we created a, a statement, all right? And it should be one sentence, one sentence that mentions the soundtrack or the album that is of special interest to you that you can relate to some aspect of a past experience, all right, or a past feeling or emotion that resonates to you. That's the first thing that we did yesterday. And I want to check, in fact, I want everyone to check the grammar of your one sentence statement. And what I've done here is I've put in bold those statements that are, I think, grammatically correct. If your statement is not in bold, then there is a change that is needed. So yesterday, I think one of the last things I mentioned or suggested was that you either ask me uh, about your grammar or ask your grammar teacher, right, to see what aspect, what still needs to be changed, All right? So I've left comments. Sometimes I just say, check your grammar. Sometimes I'm more specific. If you're not sure what to change, then ask, okay? This is one of the first things I want everyone to do before we do anything else is to have a statement, one sentence that's grammatically correct that reflects the mention of the soundtrack, maybe the artist or the musician, that performed on the soundtrack or the album and what it means to you, some sort of reference to uh, a past event, a past situation, maybe a certain emotion that you want to attach to it. That's what the purpose of a mus the musical concept here is under, uh, under column D and E. Okay, so double check that, guys. And make sure that you're changing your statements and correcting them if they're not in bold. Any questions about just this part here of uh, changing your musical concept statement? Okay. 
Okay, remember that the musical statement is going to be the basis for the interview. It's going to be the reason. It's going to give some information about how to prepare for the interview. All right, so you're partnering up and you have this information to go on when you're preparing your interview guide. Now, in Microsoft Teams, what I'd like to do now before you guys start is to continue working and preparing your guide. And I'd like to begin meeting one-on-one -on -one with each of you to look at your uh, to look at your guides. I'd like to have a conversation with each of you before you begin your interview. Now, the interview, let me go ahead and talk about how to prepare for the interview and what to do for the interview. Now, part of your preparation is going to be using the interview guide, your notes, basically, right, to know what to talk about. But this is what specifically is going to make a good performance for a semi-structured interview. And I've created a list here that I want you to read through. And I've assigned some points to the interview here. All right, so very quickly here, the first two points in what makes a good interview, the first two points, the first is that it needs to last between five to six minutes for each interview, or in total, 10 to 12 minutes. So you should have one recording for each partner. And the one video is going to consist of two interviews, one interviewing one person and the other person interviewing uh, his or her partner. All right, so in total, the video should last somewhere between 10 to 12 minutes and it should be five to six minutes each. The second is each interviewer should be prepared to ask questions related to the question about how a movie soundtrack or an album represents a person's life interest or values. Okay, so that is another aspect of what, what's going to make a good performance. Now you'll notice here, if you're looking at the Notion page, I have in points number one and two, a score from zero to 10. What this means is that these two aspects are going to impact the rest of the points that I've listed below. So for example, if your interviews, both interviews only last, let's say five minutes, let's say it only lasts half of the time that it's supposed to, the best score that you can get is going to be a 5 out of 10, right? If you speak for, let's say, 9 minutes for both, between both interviews, the best score that you can get is a 9, right, or 10% off. So the same point for point number 2, it's kind of an all or nothing. I'm going to assume that all of the questions are going to be related to a soundtrack or a general album, right? And, and how it relates to the person's life. So it can't be about anything. It has to be about, about that. All right. So these two points, point number one, point number two, when I say zero to 10, this means it's kind this affects the rest of the aspects that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Right? It's kind of an all or nothing. It affects all of it. So make sure that the time that you're speaking is enough. And don't I wouldn't go over 12 minutes. You know, 10 to 12, I think, is, is good. And obviously make sure that we're talking about movie soundtrack or an album. Now the rest of the points, point, points three through eight, have points, individual points. Uh, next to each one and it's going to be a total of 10 points so the first one here the interviews are conversational this is something we talked about yesterday we looked at a video about how to best prepare for a semi-structured interview and that's what is good about or characteristic about a semi-structured interview is that it's conversational and primarily what we mean by conversational is that it has 
three points, so three sections. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. All right, so remember that the beginning needs to be some sort of uh, introduction, a pleasant greeting, and typically we'll begin with very general questions. The middle section will now start to talk about more specific questions that relate to the movie soundtrack. And then the third section being the conclusion or the closing or maybe a final greeting like a thank you, right, for participating. So these aspects are going to make it conversational. The fourth point, worth two points, the, interviews, the interviewers will ask um, questions that allow the interviewee to provide rich description. Now, yesterday we talked about, and even last week, we talked about the setup. Remember that the setup should come before the question. So just like we did last week, we're going to continue thinking about trying to set up a question. So we're not going to jump right into the question. We're going to provide context. We're going to talk about maybe a personal feeling or perspective that we might have on the topic. And, and then we're going to transition to the question. Now try not to make the mistake of saying, uh, posing the question and then keep talking like using a connector because, and then say more about, about the, the topic. Try to get all of your ideas out about the topic in the setup before you ask the question. So when you ask the question, you're done. Now you pause and you wait for a response. Now, of course, if the interviewee needs clarification, maybe he or she is not sure how to answer or maybe just doesn't understand the question, then ask for clarification. This is conversational, so if you don't understand the question, of course, the interviewee will ask for clarification. I'm sorry, could you, what do you mean by this? Or could you, what do you, you know, I'm not sure what you're asking. That's fine. Then paraphrase, reword it. And try, try again. Try to ask the question again if the interviewee is not, uh, is not prepared to answer uh, the question. That's fine. But again, the setups, the introduction, everything before the question. The second is, and this is new, is we need to include some follow-up questions. So remember that a follow-up question is an attempt to get more specific information from the interviewee. So when the interviewee answers and says something, says something, gives you an answer, you can take that information and turn it around and, and ask a more specific question. And this is very common, and it's, and it's almost like a setup, except the setup is linked to the answer to the prior question. All right, so make sure that you're thinking about the follow-up questions. Now, you can't really prepare for a follow-up question except for maybe just a note to yourself in the moment, right? And maybe in the interview, you're taking notes. Maybe in the interview when the person is responding, you're writing down some key words that he or she says to remind you to say, hey, I, I want to ask more questions about this in a minute. Right After she finishes speaking, I want to come back and ask her about why she said she liked that concert that she went to last year or whatever. Okay, so follow-up questions and setups. These are going to make and help get rich description, more detailed information. And that is the purpose, is to try to get the details. Try to get the details from the interviewee. This is going to be worth two points. Point number five is going to be worth two points. The interviewers and interviewees faces appear in the video. So this is going to make it automatically more dynamic if we can see your lovely faces during the video. So please try your best to include your video in your interviews, along with the audio, of course. Point number six, one point. Both the interviewer and the interviewee can be heard clearly in terms of the volume with little background noise. 
All right, so try to coordinate this. If you know that this is not going to work during our class because, let's say, I don't know, uh, we're washing clothes during that hour and there's no other, you know, time, there's no other place in the house that's quieter to conduct the interview, you might decide to schedule it at another time. I'm going to give you time in class to do this. I'm going to give you in time to prepare and to do the interview. But if you need to do it outside of class, by all means, do it. No problem. All right, so that's worth one point, being able to hear your voice clearly. And some of you have really lovely voices, but they're very quiet. And I almost have to put my ear up to the speaker to be able to hear. A lot of good things going on, but the voice is so soft. So part of it might be your projection. Maybe just try to speak louder than you're used to. Try to speak more articulately, right? Over-exaggerate your pronunciation, right? But try to speak louder if you typically have a naturally soft voice. Point number seven, one point. Neither the interviewer nor the interviewee is reading anything out predetermined. All right, so the questions and the answers should be spontaneous. So even though you're going to have a, an interview guide, we want this to be as spontaneous as possible. What do I mean by spontaneous? You're not reading anything. You're not reading. You can refer to your notes, and that's why it's important, and this is why I want to see your notes. Make sure that the notes are individual words or phrases. Don't write out anything like full sentences. Don't write out questions. Don't write out answers. You can reflect. You can do a mind map. You can do an outline with short words and phrases, right? But do not write anything out because if you write out full sentences, your natural inclination, your natural desire is going to be looking at that and say, okay, I got to read that. I have a whole sentence there. I'm going to have to read that whole sentence. So don't even don't even go there. Don't even do it. Don't even include it in your your guide. Just include the notes so that the in, the questions come out spontaneously. They come out. You're creating the question, and you are creating the answer off the top of your head. Again, you can be prepared. You can be thinking about it, but don't write anything out. All right. So that's going to be worth one point. Finally, point number eight is also worth one point. The video recording contains no video cuts unless transitions are used between questions. Now, let me explain a little bit here. Now, this implies also, it kind of relates to another point that I think is important, especially in this type of uh, activity, is practice. All right, so... It's possible that you guys do your interviews one time and you pull it off and it's it's it, you're happy with the performance. But I would suggest and encourage that everyone do your interviews at least one at least two times. That is you you go through the the whole interview question and answer more than once. If you do it at least twice, then you simply choose which video, which version that you like better, right? You can also, you have this mindset that you can say, okay, you know, that was a pretty good performance, but I think we can do it better. Better based on what? Based on this list of eight points that I'm sharing with you this morning. Okay, I'm sharing this with you now knowing that probably you're not all ready yet to do the interview at this moment, perhaps, but that you're looking through all of this, all of these points so that you know how you can do a good performance, how you can do a good semi-structured interview. All right, so these are the points I want you to think about. Now, these video edits, I have no problem if you want to um, you know, produce a video with nice transitions, let's say, between interviews. So when one interview 
finishes, you start at the second interview and you have some sort of transition, that's fine. If in that transition might include a cut, that's that's okay. Mm, I I don't even have a problem if you do a video cut between questions, although, you know, in general, the less cuts, the better. Because I want you to think of this as a performance, as, uh, you know, how do you, what do you say when you don't know what to say? How do you, what do you say when you need clarification? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, when you say this, I'm not sure what you mean by this. Uh, what does this mean? What do you mean by this? Right? These are ways to clarify what the interviewer is asking, and you're just you're not sure what to think about. Remember the setups. The setups actually provide the person time to think about the answer. Even though you haven't asked the question, they're already preparing some answer. They're anticipating the answer. Now, if you're doing this more than once, of course, they're going to know after the first attempt what the questions are, but that's fine. You're still giving them time to think. And maybe you paraphrase it, maybe you even word it slightly differently. That's why each of your performances, you're likely to ask perhaps the same questions, but maybe you ask different questions, depending. Right? There, you know, anything goes here as long as you're not writing everything out. We want this to be as spontaneous as possible, but yet you probably need to be prepared. The more prepared you are, the more spontaneous you're likely to be. So please take a look at this, these eight points. Are there any questions about these eight points that we're talking about here uh, this morning? Uh, teacher, and then um, we have to do like a guide before the interview, right? Before the questions. But what could we put in in that guide? Uh, can we put like verbs or just phrases, but nothing regarding with the the questions? All right. Uh, so all right. So uh, what? All right, so what I would do is your guide is going to depend a lot on the musical concept of your partner. And this is why the first step is to make sure that we all have grammatically correct concepts. And it's one sentence. So in this sentence, it's going to have the name of, it should have the name of the, the soundtrack or the album. It's probably going to have the name of the artist and it should have some reference to some relevance to the person's life. Maybe the person mentions uh, an event or an, a feeling, right? So uh, let's say, let's look at uh, an example. All right, so this one, I like Bohemia Rhapsody soundtrack because it reminds me of a special moment with my mom. So if I'm preparing questions here, I'm going to have some key words, some key ideas about, about uh, this person's mother. Now, what I would do is I would use the question words. What, why, when, where, with whom. And although we want open questions, okay, although we want to have open questions, you know, it's as long as the questions, the, the series of questions, that is the question after question after question, because remember, you're, you're not going to ask just one question about this person's mom. You might ask, well, when did, you know, can you talk about that special moment? So what was the special moment? Okay, when did it happen? Why did it happen? Where did it happen? With whom did it happen? Maybe it was just between the two or maybe it was in a context with other people, right? And, and that's a good start, having out, having those question words in your guide at some point, having a way to write out whether it's just the question words themselves or maybe 
you write out some things that you want to ask about that special moment. Now, the Bohemia Rhapsody, you know, maybe you talk about the artist, if you, whatever you know about the artist, whatever you know about the song itself or the soundtrack, right? If they're, if they're mentioning a movie, you could mention something maybe about the movie. So you're, you're kind of looking for, you know, um, concepts that relate to that sentence, possible concepts. Now, these are all possible. This is the thing. This is a guide. So in the moment when you're talking and interviewing and you don't get to all of your uh, points that you have in your guide, that doesn't mean that it was a, a bad or a good interview, right? A good interview is what we just talked about, what we just shared. But the guide is there to help you. If the person is not uh, giving you a lot of good information, your job is to be prepared enough to dig deeper, to get those specific details. So in the guide, I'm not looking for, for much. Maybe it just depends on you know, how much you think that you want to include in there, but I would include keywords that you would anticipate asking about the, uh, the concept, the musical concept that's shared in this Excel spreadsheet, and I would keep it limited to words or phrases, and think of the question words. Think about how, what, when, why, and where, and then in the moment when you're actually doing the interview, right, then different things will come up, perhaps, depending on what the person says, and yeah, that's, that's how I would approach your, your guide. Okay, sure. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Any Sounds other cool. any other questions, my friends? Not sure. Oh, just another question. Mm -hmm. uh, then um, the interview could contain um, like uh, illimited or mm, I don't know um, questions. I, I don't know. Um, there won't be five or six or seven questions. It's depending on the time of the interview, right? Right. Yeah. Totally is going to depend on uh, the the time and also what the person says. You know, I let me get. Uh, I'll give you an example. If Somebody, if you ask somebody about this special moment with the person's mother and they're telling you something, you might just continue talking about that one special moment, the whole interview, and, and, and really talk about, you know, I don't know if you guys have like little brothers or sisters. I, I remember when my youngest son, he was very inquisitive. He was always asking questions about things, right? So he would ask, well, why is the sky blue? Well, that's a reflection off the Zeta. Well, why is the sun there? And he would just keep asking, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Well, what is he doing? Right? And kids do this a lot. They want the details. They want more information about the same thing that you just mentioned. You're just getting, giving them more information and more information. So that's an, an example of actually not getting to any of the other question words. It's just a why, 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 why. Now, that's kind of extreme if the whole interview is like that, perhaps, right? But you can see that it's not just asking one, usually, just one question, one why question. You could ask a follow-up question that still uses the question word why, to get even more information. So don't think about having X amount of questions. Think about the concepts, the possible things that you could talk about, right? The, possi the possibilities. What could you find out about this statement that they included in the Excel spreadsheet? Again, this is why it's very important to have it grammatically correct. We want to have a good start with a grammatically correct sentence. So that's the purpose, is trying to get and dig deep into what, what the meaning is behind each of these statements, your partner's statement, right? So yeah, don't, don't think, in fact, 
I, I'm not wanting anyone to come up with any predetermined questions. Okay, so don't come up with any questions in your guide. I want you to come up with concepts, ideas, keywords, and you can write out the question words, right, in a way that makes sense to you. Or you can do a mind map, right, whatever works for you, but don't write out any questions pre, pre, uh, pre the interview. We, I want you to generate these. I want you to start off with a conversation, keep it very relaxed, so the person is relaxed and comfortable, and then transition, right? Move in and use connectors and come in with your first general question. Remember to start general and then go to the specific. So maybe in your notes, you have a note to yourself. Okay, start in the beginning with general questions and then go to the specific. Whatever, whatever works for you. I, I don't want to tell you one way to do the guide. This is the point is that I want you to try to come up with something that is organized and that you can glance down in the moment of the interview and it can help prompt you to know what to, what to say and what to ask. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Did I, did I answer your question? Yes, it's clear now. All right. Thank you. Any other? Sure, I have another question. Okay. Um, the interview is for today. Um. Well, hopefully. Um. I mean, if we need an another day tomorrow, that's fine. You know, I I'm trying to see how we how we do. I don't want us to jump into the interview though. This is my the main point here. There are a lot of things here that we're doing that I want you to do before you actually jump into the interview. So I'm kind of playing it by ear. I'm going to see how it goes, right? I want us to do it today in class. I want to get as much work done in class as possible. Um, if you're ready to do the interview outside of class today, then do it. We'll see. I'll look tomorrow and see who's done it, who hasn't. And we'll talk about it. You know, we'll take it from there. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Any other questions, my friends? <laughs> right? You'll notice that a lot of these activities that we're doing, I don't want you to jump into the speaking activity. There's a lot of steps involved. So don't... Uh, don't uh, Ignore the importance of going through these steps. Why is it so important that the statement is grammatically correct? It matters, right? It matters because someone is looking at this to try to come up with questions, right? So uh, I'm surprised that not everyone has changed their, their statements. And I don't know if that's because there are questions or if it's just neglect or I don't know. So you guys tell me, but I need all of these grammatically correct. Again, I'm happy to talk to you about grammar, right? If you don't want to talk to me about grammar, then talk to your uh, grammar instructor. But please check my notes. And if you don't know if, you're, if my feedback is not clear, of course, ask. Say, what do you mean by sentence fragment? I don't know what a sentence fragment is. All right, so um, let's go ahead and continue working whatever we need to be working on. If we need to be working on the concepts, the musical concept statement, work on that. If it's a, your interview guide, fine, work on that. And I'm going to ask that everyone start sending me um, some messages. And um, in Microsoft chat, when you're ready for me to look at your interview guide or you want to discuss one-on-one, uh, -on -one, your uh, your guide. Okay, teacher, thank All you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Just jump in, guys, if you have questions. Or, again, just send me a, a message in chat. All right? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, teacher, how can I change my sentence? Because I 
I don't know what it's wrong. Ah, okay, uh, one second here. Look at it. All right, let me uh, share my share my screen here. Okay. 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 It's this one, right? I like the soundtrack of the Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right, because it reminds me. Off. Mm -hmm. It reminds me because it. Check your subject verb agreement. It is a subject. Mm -hmm. Y que tenemos que cambiar ahí en, en con remind. Reminds. Mm -hmm. It reminds me. Y luego. Reminds me, this is one of those, I think uh, you, you guys have seen this in your grammar class, these, uh, I think they call it um, prepositional verbs, is that what your teacher calls them? Prepositional verbs, certain, oh, prepos okay, okay. certain prepositions go with, with certain verbs, and so we have the preposition of, and we also have the preposition off. These are two different prepositions. Which preposition do we need with reminds? It reminds me. Reminds me of. Of. It reminds me of. Instead of off. Off. off? Just one F? Yeah, off is a is a, is a different word. Off <clears throat> you can say and let me write off here. Um Took off. That's a phrasal verb. Took off. You could say, the economy took off. That means it improved a lot. It got better. Right? Took mm -hmm. off. But uh, reminds with reminds, we need of. O-F. Okay. Okay. It reminds me of when I was child. What do we need before child? <laughs> Yeah, reminds me of when I was a child and when I saw the movies mm -hmm. with my brothers. Also, I like to sound, now, you have a comma after brothers before the mm -hmm. word also. This is what's called a comma splice. Have you guys talked about comma splices in your class, grammar class? Mm -hmm. All right, so I would avoid the comma splice, and you can just say... I saw with my brothers, and I also like the soundtrack because just say and I instead of using the the comma. You should use a connector. A lot of times to fix a comma splice, we can add a connector of some kind, and many times that will fix a comma splice. I also like the soundtrack because it make it make to so be really careful with subject verb agreement. It makes me feel inspired. It makes me feel in. How would you say that inspired? Uh, inspired. How would you say this in Spanish? Because it makes me feel inspired. How would you say that? I don't say. Me suena raro cuando lo pienso en español. I mean, it sounds fine, except the the form of the word inspire, because it makes me feel. What form of the word inspire do you need in this case? You can use the same word, but a different form. I don't know. What part of speech is inspire in this case? Is it a... Noun, a verb, is, is it a adjective, an adverb, preposition? Snapper. Connector. No. Snapper. No. So an if it's an adjective, all right. So because it makes me feel, how would you change it to an adjective? 
I don't know, Spirely. What's that? Spirely. <laughs> okay, just add a D, inspired. You want to use the past participle. Remember that oh, okay, the okay. past participle of many words, though, that's the adjective equivalent. Like you can say, I'm inspired. Right? I'm inspired. Conde. Exactly. I'm inspired. So inspired is an adjective that describes me. Mm, yeah. Does that make sense? No, so you could say it makes me feel inspired to confront the bad things in life. Yep, that's it. That's good. Looks good. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Anybody else want me to look at your sentences? And um, I don't know, uh, Monse, if you're listening or if you got my message, but I, I don't know why I don't see your uh, your musical concept statement in the Excel spreadsheet. I don't know if it was there before or if it's somewhere else, but I don't see it under the column D, under line 18. Anybody else want me to look at their grammar? In your sentences or have a question all right I don't know how many are still in the room looks like 25 here uh, it is being recorded so even if you miss it I'm gonna suggest that you go back and listen to what I'm gonna talk about here um, in fact let me see if I can grab some people's attention here because I think we can benefit by saying an example. So let's, all right, um, see if we get some folks back in here. Um, I think we can benefit by seeing an example of an interview guide. And I wanna show you guys by sharing my screen an example. I went through and I was looking at some examples so far and uh, I've seen some of you write out questions, all right? So I'm going to ask that you try to not write out the questions, but write out keywords. And I want to show you kind of what, what I mean. So I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully you can do it now. Okay. I'm sharing my screen, and I have a Word document up. And I have an example of a, a musical concept statement taken from the Excel spreadsheet. And I'm going to explain the, the thought process behind a possible interview guide, an outline, given this, uh, this type of uh, concept, this, this situation, this example. Okay, so if we look at this example, the life cycle of the Lion King movie has been one of my favorite soundtracks because I feel connected to nature when I listen to it. So I want to break this down into sections, all right? So the life cycle, all right? So for me, that's a key concept. That's a key concept, the life cycle. The Lion King movie itself is also a concept. And... A feeling of being connected to nature is a third concept. All right, so we've got three key concepts. Let me change the color here. I don't like the color. A little too dark. All right. Anyway, all right, so here we have three key concepts that I can prepare to ask about. These are three ideas, three concepts that I can think about in my interview to ask about, right? So in, in no particular order, I have each of these three key words, right? So you're going to take your own uh, musical concept statement and you can do the same. I have Life Cycle, I have the Lion King movie, and I have some con connection with nature. Now, this outline's not complete, but I think it's a good start. I have life cycle. What can I ask about that? So just looking at that idea itself, the life cycle, you could ask questions about that. 
All right. So maybe you ask about a personal event or a past experience that relates to the life cycle. And I've included the question words, what, when, how, with whom, and there, there could be other question words, all related to some personal experience or event that I want to ask about that relates to the life cycle. Nothing necessarily about Lion King, nothing necessarily related to nature, not at this point, not in my preparation. Now, when the interviewee, the person I'm interviewing, answers my questions, maybe the Lion King movie comes up, maybe something about nature comes up, or maybe not. But at least I have some beginning. I have an entrance point. I have a beginning point that I can, I can start. I don't have to start with the life cycle. I could start with the Lion King. I could ask questions about this person attending the movie. When did you attend? With whom? Why did you attend? How did you attend? And for, you know, how did you get there? You know, all possible questions that you could ask just about this person attending the movie. Not even talking about the movie itself, but the actual visit, right? Now, I do have here what. The what question could be about the movie itself. But notice the when and the with whom and the why and maybe a how. Those are all just related to the event itself, the actual going to the movie, getting popcorn, going with friends, right, or whomever. You're asking questions about that. Notice I'm not writing out any questions itself. I'm just writing certain question words and certain concepts about the Lion King movie. Now, finally, I could talk about nature Again, thinking about a personal experience. What type of nature? Like nature in what sense? Okay, so what, um, you know, and maybe a, a personal experience might bring up some ideas about what type of nature this person's referring to. But again, you could have a list of questions. When did you, you know, when did it occur if it's a personal experience, right? But the idea here is to have some entrance points, some beginning points. And just because I have life cycle up here at the beginning doesn't mean I have to start there. I can start anywhere in my guide as I, as I want. If I'm printing this out, right, if I have it printed out or, you know, if, I'm, if it's on my device and I have a way in real time to connect and, and say and mark off when I talk about each of these things, items, then I could do that. I could say, okay, I've checked off. I've already asked about what. I could check that off and say, okay, now I'm going to talk about when. And mark it off, right? But it's a guide. It's something that you can glance down and say, oh, you know what? I still need to ask a question about nature because my uh, interviewee hasn't said much yet about nature, and I want to get more information about that. But I'm finding key words. Now, this is one way to do it, All right? This is one way to do it. Now, you could also look at, for example, let's see, connection with nature instead of a personal experience. You could have something, think of something more specific, and you could think of some key concepts that relate to nature that you want to ask, ask something about. So, for example, parks, you know, I don't know, zoo, uh, you know, again, you don't know. You don't have any, uh, you don't know if this person has gone and if it relates to these or not, but these are possible things that you could ask about if they say, no, I didn't, you know, I haven't gone to the park, right, Cause, or I haven't uh, gone on nature walks, nature walks, right? These are... These are now more specific. Notice this is a different approach. I'm taking now specific aspects of nature, nature walks or hikes, nature walks or hikes. What else? You know, um, 
I don't know, any other excursions, right? Nature, natural excursions, uh, maybe some trips. Now, these are, per these are personal experiences, but notice I'm just being specific, right? You could ask these questions in each one of these. You could have a what and a how and a why and so on, right? A what, a how, a why. You know, whatever question words you think are logical to ask related to that concept. But what I'm doing is I'm breaking down this idea of natural uh, connection with nature, and I'm trying to be more specific, thinking about things that I could ask, right? And again, it doesn't mean that you have to ask all of these things in your, in your guide. You want to be prepared. You want to be ready to ask certain questions so that you're just not sitting there looking at each other, not knowing what to say. And so this guide is designed to help you get through and so that you can get as much detailed information as possible. And notice I'm forming my sentence out, not my sentence outline, my keyword outline. It's not a sentence outline, it's a keyword outline that's coming directly from the keywords from the statement. That's why this statement is so important. This is the basis for the interview itself. All right, so uh, I hope this helps. I know that this was kind of a last second here, uh, trying to get you guys back into the to class to look at this, but it is being recorded. So I'm going to reference this at the end of the class and um, recommend that all of you take a look at this. But basically, an, a, you know, an interview guide might look something like this, and, and maybe it's no more, uh, in, no more than this. Maybe this is enough to, for you to prepare. If you feel that you need more information, I mean, it's better to have more information and have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, you know, I, I would recommend that you have more information that you could possibly ask during your four to five minute interview. But notice, again, I'm not writing out a lot of text, I'm not writing out a lot of words, and I'm certainly not writing out sentences, nor am I writing out complete questions. And this is what we want to try to do so that this helps you uh, create the language in real time, that creates the question in real time. All right, so I, I hope this helps, guys. Again, I'll go, and, um, I'll go ahead and mute my mic, but jump in with questions. Keep sending me uh, chat messages you want me to look at something, but maybe uh, take this as an example to uh, think about your own concept, the, your own uh, musical concept statement that you're working with, with your partner, in uh, designing your own interview guide, all right? Okay, teacher. All right, it is 9.40. We'll go ahead and close class for today. Just to summarize, Make sure that you have included a grammatically correct statement in the Excel spreadsheet. If you have questions, of course, make sure you're reaching out and trying to clarify any doubts you have with regard to the grammar. Second, make sure that you have completed your interview guide. Uh, today, it was not required to have an online meeting with your classmates. In fact, I would prefer that you prepare individually your interview guide. Uh, earlier today, I showed an example of how you can take individual keywords from the uh, musical concept statement and design a keyword outline based on s different keywords that relate to those different ideas. So if you missed that, check out the recording about a half an hour ago or so, I shared an example and I shared a, my screen with an example of uh, what that looks like. So I would recommend everyone following a very similar approach, whether you design an outline or a mind map, but take keywords from the, uh, from the statement of your partner, from the musical concept statement, so that you are uh, coming up with questions that directly relate to that statement. All right, so if you feel that you're ready and you've completed your interview guide, go ahead and record your interview. Uh, I will give time in class tomorrow uh, to also complete this task. I won't give you the whole class, probably the first hour I'll give you to complete 
complete the task. And so if you need it, you can do it in class or if you can if you want to do it beforehand, that's fine. All right, any questions about this task? No, the chief. No. No, the chief. All right, well, we'll stop there and um, hope you guys have a good day today and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Thank you, Thank you DJ. Bye. Bye.